Hello, and welcome to my PvP setup video where I will discuss mana stones, armor, stigmas, everything while we watch LFG be a giant troll fest. <laughs> but no, seriously. Let's go ahead and get started with stigmas because these are pretty mainstream, but I will discuss a couple differences. Now, first of all, most DPS channels will use everything on the lineup to disorienting blow and mountain crash because these are two really good stigmas. DB is a guaranteed knockdown and Mountain Crash is a ranged skill, or stigma rather, that does a lot of damage. So these are generally used by most channers. Uh, then Annihilation is a stigma that has a chain effect, so you can do multiple hits, that has a stun at the end, and also has a, I believe, 7 meter range, but 6 meters is probably safer to say. So it's a really good stigma with the 1 minute cooldown that, in my opinion, is really strong. And of course there's Rise, which is a second remove shock, and <laughs> if you don't think a second remove shock, even if it has a 3 minute cooldown, is valuable, but then you need to consider how many stuns and aether holds and all the other fun stuff that classes can do in this game exist, because second remove shock is life or death a lot of the time as a channer. The only real difference though that I have with other channers is that I do not carry Soul Crush, which is here in my inventory, conveniently, because it's a really good stigma. And the knockdown is really nice to continue uh, stun lock of someone, but I like having hit mantra because I believe in being a tankier kind of person. It depends on your point of view, really. You get more offense with Soul Crush, obviously, but I just like to be able to take more hits. And having more spell resist and strike resist helps with that, especially the spell resist, because nowadays if you're using Karun accessories, which I will conveniently transition to, they are actually, not Karun, sorry. Discordant, or Bloodmark accessories is the better word, they actually have, at least for the physical ones, no spell resist, and you might be thinking spell resist isn't that big of a deal because yeah, it's only spell resist, right? Casters, who cares about them? Well, when casters crit you, it, it hurts a lot, and I don't like getting crit by Volar Seeker. I don't know about you guys, but anything to help negate that chance is important to me, so that's why I pretty much use Hit Mantra. And why did the music stop? Oh. I don't like this standing here with no music playing, so one sec, we gotta change the environment, even though this is a really pretty place. See that? Yeah. Okay, I moved to Gelk because I can. Let's talk about armor and mana stones. There are a bunch of choices here, and I pick the 65 Augment 2 1 star officer armor. It's one of the strongest sets right now. I think it actually is the strongest one, but you actually get to have two choices when you pick this armor. There's one that has in the secondary window PDEF, and the other one has magic boost. Some people might consider Magic Boost the stronger one. There are arguments for and against. I don't think PDEF is totally useless. It's just not a great stat. It's just a good one. <laughs> I mean, it depends. But in the secondary, or the augment effects rather, you actually get crit strike and attack and accuracy. So then it's not too bad of an armor choice, really. It's more of a preference thing. And then, in terms of mana stones, I actually socket Magic Resist, Magic Accuracy, and Crit Strike. Normally, I would advocate you only put in two different things because you can't really fit three different stats in one socketing, but I have composite stones, so that lets you bypass that rule. So my chest, I have full magic resist here, and then my pants and my shoulders actually have a mix of MAMR composite stones and magic resist stones, because I want to have a pretty good MA amount, but I also want to have a decent amount of magic resist. And then my gloves and boots actually have the most expensive stones, the MA and crit composite stones. I actually keep my 60E gloves because it was so expensive to buy these, I didn't want to replace them again. And it's not a big deal having the 60 versus the 65. I mean, you're losing out some stats, especially the magic suppression, but again, it's not too bad because of the mana stones. My armor is actually, or not my armor, my weapon is actually the other thing that has composite stones in it. I have a plus 14 Moto Staff, which is the max one, and I put in pretty much just crit strike with maybe some MA composites or an MA ancient mana stone because you do need a pretty healthy amount of crit in PvP too. So I'm gonna go talk about these stats right now. After popping a crit skull, of course. First of all, attack. This is not important in PvP. I don't really think there's a good reason to socket attack because crit is always going to be better because nothing is better than critting. Uh, you can hit more on weaves, but critting is really strong. So I don't really consider attack too big of a deal. The only real buff you can use is Rage Spell, but I don't use that because I like to heal faster, and after using it and not using it, I've just decided not to use it because, eh, I don't know. It's a preference thing, but personally, I don't use it. Next is Accuracy. 
So this stat, you can get away with 2.9k, 3k, it doesn't have to be that high. The exception, of course, are block clerics and not really Templars, so I'm not going to consider them for this. But block clerics, they can get a really high amount of block. And the only way to negate that is to have a high amount of accuracy. So, macro time. I'm going to swap to my Colosseum C2 armor. It's level 60, and it's fully socketed accuracy. Okay, not fully, but three pieces, I think, have one crit stone in them, just to make them a little better. Oh, two pieces, even. But as you can see, my accuracy goes up to 3.581, which is almost 3,600. You're still going to get blocked, granted, by block clerics, but it's not going to be as bad, so getting through their block is really essential, and it's something you just use on the fly, that's why it's a macro, so you can just go to it and go back to your other piece, but the problem is I have to put my headpiece back on. That's fine, though, I don't really mind doing that. I can make a third macro to just swap everything but the helm, but that would be too much work. <laughs> so yeah, accuracy, you can get away with just a healthy amount, like 2.9, 3k, which is going to be normal for most people, or you can make a set for accuracy, but yeah. Then we move on to crit strike. Here you're going to want at least 900 to 1k, probably if you're in PvP. Personally, I have 881, and then I have a miss or an Indian that adds 50, which is a pretty big number. But I mean, you can be okay with 850 to 900 crit strike. The more, the merrier, I guess I'll say again, like I did in the previous video. But crit strike is really important in PvP, so you can get a lot of this and kind of negate another stat like magic resist. It depends on you. I'm personally I'm okay with the 931 number here though. So we'll just consider that preference and move on to the next tab, which is going to have PDEF and strike resist and a bunch of other stats I don't care about. So the PDEF I actually have is 2656, which is not bad because my armor, again, adds all the PDEF and it's not terribly useless, it's just not great. <laughs> I can say that again and it'll still be true. The other important stat here is my strike resist. I have 536 by default, but I can actually use a scroll to get 65 more, so I have over 600 strike resist, which is really strong. And it's a big defense against Templars and Gladiators especially, and even Chanters, because crits on these classes are really essential, and if you negate that, it helps fighting them so much. You just feel tankier, and there are a bunch of arguments for <laughs> why strike resist is great, why it isn't great, but my opinion, I've always had a lot, and it's really good to have, and it feels really good, so strike resist all the way. That being said, strike fortitude, not really that important. I just have it in my wings, and somewhere else. I don't know where else it is. My belt? I don't know. <laughs> Move on to the next tab. We have MB and MA. These are also pretty important for a channer. MA is more important because you need MA to land your stuns, your debuffs, and your damage procs. And we have all of those. So as you can imagine, having a pretty good magic resist is or magic accuracy, excuse me, is good because classes can get a decent amount of base magic resist now. Sorks especially with Elemental War they can get over 2k. And our default MA isn't amazing, it's maybe 1600 at most. 1500 sounds like a better number actually. But if you socket a couple hundred more points of MA, you'll notice how much more you stun and land debuffs because, say, landing Held Strike on maybe a Templar that's using magic resist stones and, and composites and kind of st socketing it a bit, if you can land Held Strike on them, then you're bypassing that defense they're trying to rely on, and it helps so much. So, MA, really important because you need to land things on people to make. Uh, well, I mean, you need to land your debuffs in general because that's what makes Chenner strong, right? <laughs> Landing Howl Strike. Number one most annoying skill against the melee class in the game. And then Magic Boost is good for Blessing of Wind, and if you use Promise of Wind, that too. Even to a lesser extent, the damage over time thing on Mountain Crash or Damage Godstone, but it's good to have a decent amount of MB. You can just enchant your weapon to at least 10 and be satisfied with that number because it doesn't make or break you really. Um, but it's good to have a healthy amount. And finally, we go to the last tab with Magic Suppression, Magic Resist, and Spell Resist. So Magic Resist, I talked about this before, is in my armor. I have about 2k, just a little bit underneath, because you don't want to get feared by something like an SM with a 1500 MA. That would just feel bad, so you keep a decent amount of MR in my opinion, just to make sure you don't get hit by every single debuff. And against physical classes too, you'll resist occasionally. You'll resist maybe like 50% of lockdowns from gladiators. It depends, but having the chance there 
can make or break in fighting, so it's good to have a better chance with a high amount. This, of course, comes with having composite stones, so I wouldn't advocate this unless you can squeeze to get good enough crit strike and magic accuracy, because your offensive stats are more important, and it's more critical that you uh, lock down someone. That's another way of negating them from doing anything to you. And actually, speaking of magic resist, if I swap to my mason shield, I get almost 2200. So when I'm running away or I need to just heal a bunch or try to be slippery, I can just hit my swapping weapons macro and suddenly it's pretty good. And it's nice too. I can even go even crazier and swap these two pieces I keep in my inventory and get up to 2340 MR. So MR is still a nice stat, I just don't think it's uh, the one thing you should be relying on. And it's more, uh, I guess, it's a better way to play to try and control the fight rather than hope that you don't get controlled, which is the whole idea between, uh, <laughs> wow, between uh, magic accuracy and magic resist. Magic accuracy is meant more to control a fight. Magic resist is more meant to not get controlled. So, depends on which side of the spectrum you're on. That was a pretty lengthy explanation, but <laughs> there's a lot you can argue about here. I'm just trying to be simple. Magic suppression. If you have the blood mark accessories, which I have the full set of, you get a ton of magic suppression compared to 60 accessories. So that was a big boost there. And the armor as well, the 65 armor, gives a nice amount. So I actually have 1361. I could get a little more. I could get probably get over 1400 if I had changed my gloves, but this is a healthy number. You're going to have a lot more magic suppression in 4.0, and it's going to notice, or it's going to be noticeable rather, versus casters because if you didn't have those extra couple hundred points, things like Polar Seeker would hurt so, so much more than they already do. I mean, they only do about, what, 4k to 4.5k on average with Magic Assist now, assuming it's not a full MB Sork or anything. So it's not too bad, really. You can get around with that. And finally, Spell Resist. You might be thinking, oh, Spell Resist, not that big of a deal because I don't get crit by casters that much. Well, actually, there's nothing worse than getting crit by Polar Seeker. So I keep Hit Mantra to increase my spell resist by quite a bit. I have 88 here for some reason. I don't remember where my extra 33 comes from. Maybe it just comes from being awesome. <laughs> no, seriously. Oh, it comes from my Mason Shield. There we go. I have 64 spell resist. So if you didn't have Hit Mantra, you would actually have only 9. Am I getting that right? Yeah, I think so. That's a really abysmal number because you'll get crit by casters so much. And... There's nothing worse than getting crit by a caster, in my opinion, since their spells already tend to do a lot of damage. So this is another thing that I consider undervalued, spell resist, because you can always argue that you just keep a caster locked down and they won't be able to hurt you, but I don't know, it's hard to lock down something like a sorcerer right away, so in my opinion, spell resist even a little bit helps. Wow, okay, that does it for all the stats, right? Uh, I can just talk about my helmets real quick. I only use two helmets. They're both the Colosseum 60 ones that are conditioning to you. One's the one that gives strike resist, one gives magical accuracy. I swap between them. If I'm fighting a caster, obviously I'll switch to the MAMR one. Well, it's not MA, it's MA spell resist, excuse me. <laughs> and the other one just gives strike resist and pretty much just that. I keep that one on by default because if I get jumped by a sin, it's only seven strike resist, but hey, might as well, right? <laughs> Great reasoning there. Okay, uh, what else do I need to talk about? Actually, in terms of everything I use for PvP, that's pretty much it. So, to reiterate, Stigma's DB and MC line really good. Then you can kind of vary between Hitman and Soul Crush, and then I personally recommend using Annihilation and Rise all the time. PvP armor wise, something like any of the 60 or 65 PvP gear is really good. So, just try to get that stuff. And again, I think. MAMR, or no, MA crit, most important stats, MR if you can get composite zones, or you can choose between different stats. It, it's up to you really, I just think those three are a really strong combination. Accessories, blood marks, simple as hell. <laughs> uh, helmet, yes. Okay, power shards. Where are my expensive power shards? I keep these ones tucked away for special PvP occurrences because they give five more points than the premium ones, oh yeah. Alright, that should be it pretty much for the PvP side of things, so I hope this video and the PvE one were helpful. Um, I think I covered everything I wanted to. I mean, there are elemental scrolls, all this other stuff. I'm not going to talk about those in this video, though. So, take care, everyone, and until I get to the next rehashing of videos, ta-ta.